Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you're new. Thank you for taking time out of your day to check the video out. We have more PlayStation news, rumors, and leaks to go over and cover today. So do me a favor before we get into these topics. If you end up enjoying this video or finding it informative, be sure to leave it a like. It helps the videos more than you know. And if you are new here to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button as well. We're starting here talking about a new game that is going to be dropping into PlayStation Plus day and date. For the month of april this is being reported by playstation lifestyle ps plus is getting a new day one release in april and it's one that you might have not seen coming this means that both march and april will have had day one ps plus releases meet your maker will be launching on ps plus on day one in april which could be a huge boon for the game itself meet your maker is a game as a service title in which you play through other players user generated content that they've built Thanks to the day one release, this may mean that the game finds a larger player base, which also means a larger variety of user generated content. This in turn will lead to more people uh, deciding to play the game and it feeds into itself. This follows the day one release of uh, Chia later this month, which will be released on March 21st. Meet Your Maker will be available on April 4th, so it's only a couple of weeks after Chia. It's unclear currently as to whether or not this is a pattern that PlayStation plans to carry into May and later months, but it's a good sign uh, that two different months are getting day one releases. And yeah, that's the thing that this seems to point to is Sony is beginning to try to find more and more games to bring into PS Plus at launch. And an interesting fact about Meet Your Maker is this is actually the same studio that developed Dead by Daylight. So if you, you know, see this game Meet Your Maker, it honestly looks nothing like Dead by Daylight, but I you know, think that's worth pointing out because a lot of people do like the game Dead by Daylight. And so, you know, I think that maybe that studio's reputation could potentially help out this game as well. So there you go. Moving on to the next topic, though, we have some good news regarding Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores, the upcoming DLC. Guerrilla Games is basically talking about how this will be a PS5 exclusive expansion and they're basically leveraging the power of the PS5 with this upcoming expansion. This is coming from Gaming Bolt, and it says, so what exactly has the expansion's PS5 exclusivity enabled Guerrilla to do that the developer wasn't able to do in the base game? Answering that question in an interview with PlayStation Blog, game director Matthias de Jong said that players can look forward to environments that will be even more detailed than what the series has always been known for, which sets a very high bar for the expansion indeed. One of our key priorities with Horizon uh, games is to add a ton of detail and richness to our environments. On Horizon Forbidden West, everything we added or increased was something we'd need to have a plan around how to optimize for the PS4 as well. With Burning Shores, since we can just focus on the PS5, we've been able to charge forward and we're really excited about what we've been able to pull off in creating this stunning post-apocalyptic version of Los Angeles. The cityscape ruins of LA and its surroundings are highly detailed and require a lot of processing power as well as fast streaming technology to run properly, especially when the player is flying over the lands and can see a lot at once. One of those settlements is situated in and around those detailed ruins, and we were able to squeeze a lot of activity there. Deyang also went on to add that one particular battle scene in Burning Shores requires a lot of memory and power, as he puts it, that Gorilla was able to pull off thanks to the PS5's hardware capabilities, though obviously he didn't give it too many details on what that battle scene will entail. So yeah, I had to be sure to talk about this because, you know, I I couldn't help but, uh, you know, be a little bit curious as to, you know, what's going on with the Burning Shores DLC considering it's coming out uh, in just about a month. We haven't really heard too much of it. So it's nice to see Gorilla coming out and talking about it. And, you know, I got to be honest, this gets me very excited. This is exactly what I want to be hearing. I did not expect this DLC to be PS5 only, and I'm happy that it is. And, you know, one of the things that people were saying, one of the reasons why other people were also happy is because it's like, oh, maybe we're going to see Gorilla pull something off here that we just, you know, haven't seen them achieve yet with a game like Horizon or a game series like Horizon. And hearing what he's saying, it sounds like that's exactly what's about to happen, you know, and uh, for as amazing as Horizon Forbidden West, the base game itself was, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what they're going to be able to achieve uh, now that this is just going to be PS5 only. So let me know your thoughts on that. Moving on to the next set of topics, we're talking all about The Last of Us. 
First of all, The Last of Us uh, HBO season one has officially ended and it peaked at 8.2 uh, million viewers with the finale, which is certainly impressive considering it aired the same night as the Oscars. So it actually still achieved uh, growth um, during that time. Uh, personally, I thought that they handled the ending very well. I think they certainly did justice to the game. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. But we have some information on season two and the second game. So one of the things that Neil Druckmann did confirm when it comes to covering The Last of Us Part Two in the upcoming HBO series is that it will span more than just a second season. He didn't say how many more seasons there will be to cover the second part. Uh, he didn't say it's, if it's going to be like two seasons or three, but it, I think it's safe to say at minimum we're going to get three seasons to cover part two, um, you know, in total. And it's also worth noting that producer Craig Mazin talked about whether or not they're going to change some things with The Last of Us Part Two. And let's face it, whether you love The Last of Us Part Two or not, it, it was a very divisive game. It caused a lot of intense reactions. And, uh, there's no doubt that some people are going to be wondering, you know, are they going to change things? Well, Craig Mason says, quote, there are going to be things that are going to be different and there are things that are going to be identical. There are things that are going to be added and enriched. There are some things that are going to be flipped. Our goal remains exactly what it was for the first season, which is to deliver a show that makes fans happy, end quote. Now, I find this quote interesting because, you know, when I think about things that they completely changed or flipped or the first season of The Last of Us, there aren't many. Uh, in fact, there's only one that comes to mind, and that is how they handled the ending uh, of Bill's chapter, right? In the game, it was a pretty depressing ending. You know, he didn't really have a happy ending. Uh, it was kind of not that great, right? In the show, they decided to change that and give him a much better ending. I mean, it depends on how you look at it, but I think everybody can agree that it, it was certainly a much, a much better ending for the character of Bill than, you know, kind of the way they left it in the game. So when it comes to season two and covering part two, obviously the big question that everybody's going to have is how they're going to handle Joel and what's going to happen there. All I'm going to say is this. Pedro Pascal is, at this moment in time, I think the most popular and biggest actor on the planet. He has absolutely exploded after, you know, starring in The Last of Us. Um, if I had to guess, they're going to expand some things. I think they're going to do more and show more of what happened in between part one and part two, potentially, to kind of, you know, help build up to certain events and give it kind of more time. To properly build up to it that's my guess and i think that that would be maybe something really good to do especially if you're going to expand it into multiple seasons but at this point i'll be interested to hear what you guys have to say about you know what they might change and what they might keep the same and the final topic regarding the last of us talks about the upcoming multiplayer game and how a job listing has been spotted that may indicate it's going to release on ps4 it says here, Naughty Dog's The Last of Us multiplayer project could be heading to PS4 in addition to PS5, according to a job listing for an associate multiplayer quality assurance tester. The position calls for the successful applicant to have, quote, working knowledge of PS4 and PS5 systems, end quote, which suggests the game would be a cross-gen release. Naughty Dog hasn't confirmed whether or not the game will be heading to PS4, so this job listing is pretty much all we have to go off of right now. And I just wanted to take a moment to say that, you know, this job listing simply does not confirm or deny whether or not we're going to get a PS4 version. But what I will say is that not that long ago, we got an interview with Herman Holst, the head of PlayStation Studios, where he said that when it comes to cross-gen going into 2023 and beyond, uh, really they're only going to be thinking about it when it comes to their multiplayer live service games. So with that in mind, and the fact that development of this project no doubt started on the PS4, or at least with the PS4 in mind, do not be surprised if this does release on PS4. I'm not saying be happy about it, but I'm just saying that it's a multiplayer live service game. Sony's going to be looking to capitalize on that by trying to put it, you know, out there for as many people to play as possible. And considering they have 120 million, you know, basically 120 million PS4s out there, I I'm expecting it to release on PS4. It would be pretty sick if it didn't, but I still think it's going to look really, really good 
what you know whether it releases on ps4 or not so just wanted to kind of give you that small update there we are moving on to the final topic of the video though and this is a pretty big deal because we have a new rumor coming from an incredibly reliable source that claims sony does in fact have a ps5 pro in development and he lets us know when it could end up releasing so this is being reported by tom henderson over at insider gaming and he has been reporting pretty pretty consistently i would say about new playstation hardware and he has been completely spot on so i'm certainly inclined to believe everything that he is reporting here it says insider gaming sources have confirmed that the ps5 pro is in development and it could release with a tentative release date of late 2024 insider gaming previously reported that a new ps5 with a detachable disc drive is scheduled to release later this year it's understood that this new model will phase out the current ps5 to cut down on production and shipping costs in spite of the widespread re reports this is not the ps5 pro model this is, quote, just the beginning of new hardware coming to PlayStation users this generation, end quote, said one source when talking about the detachable disk drive console. As for what the PS5 Pro specs will entail, details are limited. However, a recently published patent by PlayStation architect Mark Cerny suggests that Sony Interactive Entertainment is looking to, quote, accelerate, end quote, ray tracing performance in video games. Just like with the PS4 to the PS4 Pro, we can generally guess pretty confidently that the PS5 Pro will have increased visuals, performance, and speeds, but as for leaked details, we'll have to wait until a later date to release those. Insider Gaming also understands that the next generation of PlayStation, the PlayStation 6, is unlikely to release until at least 2028. This would put the current generation console release schedule in line with its predecessors. So... Yeah, this is a very interesting report that we're getting from uh, Tom Henderson. He's saying that, you know, we have been told by our sources that Sony is working on a PS5 Pro and it could come as soon as late 2024. Um, a lot of people have been saying for quite some time that there's no way Sony's going to do a PS5 Pro. Now, I will say that I started to kind of adopt that mentality as well more recently where I'm like, you know, the further we get into this generation, the longer cross-gen lingers, the fact that we still have so much untapped potential of the PS5. Um, I started to think, yeah, you know what? Maybe, maybe a PS5 Pro simply doesn't make sense. And Sony's like, look, we're not going to bother. But prior to me adopting that mentality, I would say over and over again that I... I could definitely see Sony doing a PS5 Pro because I just always kind of felt like they simply have no reason not to, knowing that people who want it are going to buy it. And it's just a really easy way for Sony to basically get certain uh, PS5 buyers to just basically double dip in a way and just buy another version of the PS5. Because I know that a lot of people are going to say that we don't need a PS5 Pro. This is... Uh, not smart. This makes no sense. Uh, this is a weird generation. We don't need it. And yeah, you might be right. Is a PS5 Pro actually necessary? Probably not. But I think a lot of people also need to kind of calm down and realize that you don't have to buy it. And I think that's the most important thing to keep in mind when we talk about a PS5 Pro is it's there for simply people who want it. Because whether you know it or not, millions upon millions of people are going to buy a PS5 Pro, even if they already bought a ps5 and also if you're somebody who says i don't really care about a pro i think the ps5 is perfectly fine you're right it is perfectly fine and it'll be perfectly fine until the playstation 6 releases apparently sometime in 2028 so yeah um as the report says here apparently they do have some more information regarding the specifications uh, of the ps5 pro and they say here that they're going to have to wait until a later date to release that information that that could be so that way they can you know kind of have content for later on and they're just going to sit on it or they could have been told that look the specs might change so you might want to hold off on talking about it but yeah this is interesting because i i do want to ask you guys for those who are interested in a ps5 pro uh, what would you like to see from it what would you hope that sony would kind of incorporate into it and market you know how would they market this console and what would get you excited to pick you know ps5 pro up i'll definitely be interested to hear what you guys have to say but that's going to do it for the video be sure to leave it a like if you enjoyed it or found it informative subscribe to the channel if you're new hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share the video out 
on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.